All right, football time on the Sportsmax Zone. Match week 15 in the Rear Nephew Jamaica Premier League culminated with three matches on Monday night, two of which were carried live on your home of champions. Let's find out what transpired with Lance, who is on recap duties today. How sweet it is. For the first time in this Rear Nephew Jamaica Premier League season, the stage was the Catherine Hall Sports Complex. Dormant for a long time, now seeing some football action, much to the excitement of fans from the western side of the island. And it was their cherished Montego Bay United on display, taking on Waterhouse, a battle of ex-champions, both harboring aspirations of climbing into the top six. Unfortunately for the home crowd, it was Waterhouse who would strike first. And unsurprisingly, it was the league's top scorer, Jafane Bryan, who would give the visitors the lead in the 33rd minute. Watch him. I mean, not even on the training ground, you'd get more opposition. And it would be more dread for the home team in the 59th minute, as Rivaldo Mitchell would latch on to Denarda Thomas's corner to give Waterhouse a 2-0 lead. The heart of Montego Bay is a fighting one, and fought they did. And in the 75th minute, they got themselves back in the game. Brazilian Lucas Correa grabbing his third of the season. And then Pandemonium. Former JPL, Golden Boot winner, Owain Gordon back in the team and back with a bang. Into the area. Chance here for Gordon! And that's how it would end between both teams, a draw not helping either to climb up the table. Safe to say Waterhouse coach Marcel Fuzzigail was not happy with his team letting a two-goal lead slip. Uh, we, we lost our concentration and we, we gave up to a soft goal. You know what I mean? And, you know, that was our accolade um, all season. We, we've been giving up goals and we've been giving up silly goals. And tonight, you know, we, we, we pay for it tonight. And Montego Bay's Brazilian coach Nida Dos Santos says this comeback still didn't give him a winning feeling. A win is a win. I think we should have won the match in the last 20 minutes, but we didn't do that. And uh, it's fair because they play better the first half, we play better the second half, we cannot complain about yeah. it. In this topsy-turvy league, Mount Pleasant regained top spot following their 1-0 win over Treasure Beach with Portmore, Cavalier, Arnett Gardens and Tivoli all within four points of top spot. Newly promoted Treasure Beach and Lime Hall still sinking at the bottom of the table. Yeah, the Catherine All encountered the only one on the home of champions yesterday. Of course, there were two games at the Anthony Spalding Sports Complex, Cavalier and Tivoli, nil all and 4-1 for Arnett Gardens over Malines United. And you just saw the table there with Mont Pleasant returning to the top of the Jamaica Premier League. Lance and Mariah watched that Waterhouse Montego Bay United game last night and Waterhouse looked as if they had it won um, deep into the contest. And I think the few Montego Bay supporters at the Catherine Hall um, Stadium were probably um, getting ready to leave with nothing and they were able to rally and, and get a point. I think Waterhouse would have left extremely disappointed that they didn't walk away with three points last night. Yeah, I thought so as well. And coach Marcel Gale said as much in the post-match uh, interview how disappointed he was that they have given up soft goals. But um, uh, credit to the Montego Bay team who fought back gallantly. And uh, this would have been the first uh, Premier League match at Catherine Hall, I think, since COVID-19. So the fans would be very happy that they now have JPL football back on their, on their home turf. And there's something happening with this Mobe team on the new ownership, uh, Mariah and, and Ricardo. And they have uh, included in their roster some uh, high-quality Mobe players of the past or Premier League players of the past. People like Owen Gordon, who has been playing in the USL in the USA for quite some time. Now, Brian Brown is also back. And uh, they are on a four-game unbeaten run at the moment, Mobe. And they have had not, they've not had an unbeaten run that long since the middle of last season. So I think... Um, there is uh, encouraging signs in the Mobe team at the moment about their rebound. But um, at the top of the table, looking very, very com competitive, um, Malines, uh, Mont Pleasant, but uh, four or five teams um, on their heels. Yeah.
Yeah, um, Lance spoke about the ownership and, of course, players coming back. And instantly I wanted to ask, is there a, um age limit if you are to play for the Jamaica Premier League or once you're good and, of course, the team is interested? No age limit. Can, no age limit? No age limit. Only no. because of when Lance he, could play. And it'll be okay once he produces. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's unlikely he that, would that produce. Would be, that but... would be a word. Why, why you say that? <laughs> I, I still have some magic passes in my boots there, Ricardo. I just I want for your information. I just don't think you have the fitness level that it would take to operate efficiently okay. in the Jamaica Premier League. Okay. I think quality-wise and your skill level. Okay, I accept that. Okay. <laughs> and Lance, you didn't even tell him that you started back playing yesterday. I tell no lies, you know, Lance. Yes, yes. I tell no lies. I only speak the truth. <laughs> what did you guys make of the surface, though? at the Montego Bay Sports Complex at Catherine Hall. Look, looked a bit dodgy and there was a lot of heavy rain in the afternoon so it in the evening during the match so it cut the surface up a bit yeah. but it has been a surface that has struggled. It hasn't been you know under full care for right. several years now. It'll so take time. When, when the heavy rains came in the second half it made things a bit difficult but we're hoping that since there are matches now being played there that the, the, the preparation of the surface will improve because it had been for many years one of the best surfaces in the country, the, yes. the Catherine Hall uh, Montego Bay Sports Complex. So disappointing for football fans that it had, um, you know, fallen to those, to those levels. Yeah. But since there is, you know, hope for the venue to be used more frequently in the JPL, I would, I would suspect that it will trigger some more attention to the field. Yeah, one of the matches, though, that drew a lot of excitement and even better for me now because I had the opportunity to interview Fabian Reed that Arnett Gardens match against Malines United 4-1 and Fabian Reed scoring a hat-trick. He comes back from India, back into the JPL team, and he's lighting up the JPL. Yeah, he is. Um, and great for Arnett Gardens. They needed that victory because um, they had a few weeks where... Um, things weren't going as they would have wanted, so that was a big win for them last night. And it, I, I think as well it's a victory that they would have expected against um, Molines United, and they got it, so that was important. I also want to make the point quickly, guys, relating to the Montego Bay Sports Complex, that before the new ownership took over Montego Bay United that the home games were being played at West Paul Park. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the new ownership has made quite a push um, to have their games played at the Montego Bay Sports Complex. So I'm hoping that that will help um, in rejuvenating the surface there because you are right, Lance, for a long time that surface was a quality surface and a lot of big matches were being played there. Um, you have lights at the venue, so that is great as well. Yes. Um, it, the capacity in terms of the spectatorship is good, so you, you can get fans coming in and they feel comfortable. Um, and that, I think, is good for football in Montego Bay generally and good for football in the country to have a venue like that up and running and operating at 100%. Yeah, and the, the fact is, from Moran Point to Negril, mm -hmm. There is hardly a football community that surpasses Montego Bay yes. when it is at its peak. So Montego Bay not having football at this level for so long, to me, has been bad yeah. for, for domestic football in Jamaica. So um, we know how passionate the Montego Bay football fans are. And if Montego Bay starts um, improving and showing the quality that saw them won multiple Jamaica Premier League titles, as the signs suggest that they are getting back to some uh, top form, I think we can anticipate a rejuvenation of the Montego Bay United fans and uh, them having a lot to cheer about. Yeah. Yeah, for a fact. Time to go to break on the Sportsman Zone. Interactive coming up.